Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. If you are brand new to the channel, welcome aboard guys. Thank you very much for spending uh, a couple of moments with us. Uh, only thing we ask, take a moment, uh, like, uh, like the video, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Come on this journey with us on a day-to-day -day, uh, based on our technical analysis, based on uh, data. So if you watched the video last night, uh, you kind of knew... Uh, where I was, you know, my, my thinking was I, I, I thought we were going to have pretty much a res day today on a lot of mega cap uh, technology names. If you looked at yesterday's close, uh, you know, that's it was it was a red close, inverted hammer, a little bit of, of, of a baby range and basically just said, hey, stock just needed a day of breath. Uh, take a day of breath, take a relaxation, had an incredible run. It doesn't mean the market's going to go down. It just means that sometimes you need a uh, breath to go on uh, further. And today played out pretty much like we talked about. Um, like I said in last night's video, I didn't see a lot of value uh, in the mega cap technology space today. I thought this was going to be kind of a distribution day. Uh, that's kind of exactly the way it turned out. If you look at uh, the majority of names, you know, they're up a dollar, down a dollar, nothing, nothing, nothing crazy. And that was the whole point. No one uses good news, right? Uh, the last thing the bullish case wanted to see was an aggressive pull today, take down two, three days uh, worth of buying and, you know, let the smoke uh, settle for tomorrow. That didn't happen. That's a good thing. Um, you know, the technology space was kicked off today uh, with earnings. Um, you know, let's talk about the latter first, uh, which is Texas Instruments. So Texas Instruments uh, in the semiconductor space, if you guys are old enough to remember, Texas Instruments used to make calculators, right? That's that was kind of their big deal. Uh, that, that was their big thing years and years ago. As you can see here, um, not a great quarter, right? Not a great quarter at all. Uh, light on a lot of areas. And you would think because of the huge run-up on the semiconductor space, you would think these stocks after hours would be absolutely destroyed. Because if you look at Texas Instruments right now after hours, it's down about six and a half points, about 4%. And you would think NVIDIA, AMD, SMCI would all be getting killed. No, not at all. Absolutely not at all. If you look at, for example, NVIDIA, uh, NVIDIA is pretty much flat. Uh, you know, it's pretty much flat on the close with down 20 cents, right? Uh, down 20 cents. Uh, AMD uh, after the close is what? Down 20 cents. So you you can see here the, the, the semiconductors are holding very, very strong despite the, the bad quarter uh, on uh, Texas Instruments. And that's a, a great sign of the strength of the demonstrating strength in the entire mega cap space. On the flip side, we talked about Netflix last night. And I, I really believed uh, going into uh, this quarter, again, there wasn't a lot of excitement, right? There wasn't a lot of excitement. There wasn't a lot of hoopla going on in the stock. And when you have a really aggressive burn barn burner type of market, any good news, literally any good news will light the flame in these stocks. And look at you know look at uh, Netflix after the close. Uh, Netflix is up about seven percent. Um, yeah, about seven percent. It's up thirty five bucks at the time I'm I'm recording this uh, video right now. It's about four thirty five on the Eastern time. You guys should probably get the video around six thirty seven o'clock unless they they really bomb uh, on the conference call. That's a big move here. I mean, really really big move. The subscriber numbers w was great. Uh, a lot of that was due to the part that the whole uh, password sharing was kind of, uh, you know, it was kind of a thing in the past. So good quarter on Netflix. Here's the craziest part about it is I thought everything would be ripping on the Netflix earnings and nothing really is. So it's a kind of odd uh, opening going into tomorrow's session. Nothing's going down, which is bullish and nothing's really going up after hours, which is kind of peculiar considering uh, the powerful move on uh, Netflix have. Fast forward to tomorrow, right? Number one, we're getting a lot of really good setups going into tomorrow. Uh, you have names in the in the cloud space like Snow breaking out. It actually broke out today. I'll, I'll show you guys the pivots. Only a couple pivots today, right? Snow is ready to break out. It's a big, big, broad channel. Uh, today, this is the highest close in this whole formation. 
Uh, it got above the December highs, and this is the highest close above the Bollinger Band, right? If you look at Microsoft, Microsoft held very, very well as well, okay? Any single pullback into the rising five-day support is bullish if the bulls defend. That's exactly what I, what Microsoft has been uh, has been doing here, right? Riding the five-day moving average. We saw a lot of 400 weeklies uh, coming in. Amazon looks ready, okay? Uh, I know they report next week, but this thing looks ready. This thing has been consolidating now uh, for a couple of weeks. If you guys remember a couple of weeks ago, we had this really great breakout on Amazon from the 52 level, touched right into supply in the 57. This thing is like a day or two away from really busting out. This is something that if you trade uh, the technology space, you should really be aware of because this is a, one of the one of the beautiful charts left that is not overextended, has not uh, really had that mega run like a name like Apple, right? And Apple broke out three days ago, again, above the 50-day moving average is bullish. Apple broke out above the 50-day. It's having a really, really nice run. Uh, we saw a whole bunch of 97.50s coming in. We saw a whole bunch of 200 weeklies coming in. So, you know, again, further stretching uh, the breakout of the stock as well. And look at the video. This is the champ. Like, this is a, a champ of all champs now. Not only is the stock up, literally, it's it's up 200 points in the last few weeks. The damn thing does not want to come in, even on a res day today. It had an opportunity to really get hit today when it lost the previous day's range, and it didn't quite hit the five-day moving average, but that shows you how strong it is, and now it actually closed the highest close in this whole formation as well. We did see some 615, 620 weeklies as well, so the way they're betting the stock, despite the 200-point uh, rally so far in the last three weeks, they, there really is no stopping. It's almost like they removed uh, the brakes from this, from this, uh, this vehicle, because, again, there's a lot of really... Uh, aggressive bets. Uh, AMD continues uh, to shine as well. Same type of setup, same type of scenario uh, that with Microsoft, that with NVIDIA. It's just hugging. It's just hugging the five-day. Uh, every single time it comes down to the five-day, it gets uh, it gets defended. The key is with these stocks, and eventually they all will get pulled. It's just, it's, it's just common sense. It's just gravity. But eventually, if the five-day gets lost, and this is not just uh, specifically for AMD. It could be for Microsoft. It could be for NVIDIA. It could be for anything going down the road, right? Whether it's tomorrow, you know, be aware of the five-day because if the stocks start losing two or three days ranges and they start losing the five-day moving average, you could have a nice backside trade uh, for one day. We've seen in the most aggressive bull markets that if the five-day gets pulled, we've seen days that one candle wipes out two, three, sometimes four days uh, worth of buying. So it's always something that's in the back of my mind. So again, these five-day holds eventually will become a massive support. Uh, and if they, if they do get violated, again, it's not necessarily for tomorrow, but if they do get violated, that's when your backside trade starts. Let's talk about the one that everybody wants to talk about for tomorrow. Your friend, my friend, everybody's friend, right? Elon Musk, greatest stock of all. So for weeks and weeks and weeks now, we've seen, it's not really uh, uh, you know, it's not really a secret, right? Uh, for weeks, we've been seeing a lot of weakness in the stock. It failed to break out. It failed to hold the 50-day. It failed to hold the 200-day. Pr pretty much, we've been short-sided on the stock every single day. Yesterday was the only day um, I got long. Um, we got long. We took advantage of, of the previous day's range, caught the move for like three points. Today, it did exactly what it did yesterday. And today, at the open, just like it did on uh, yesterday at the open, it got rejected into the, this de declining supply. Everybody see this? We actually we, we, we actually went short on this decline, which turned into a, a really, really good day. But you know, I wasn't really expecting to trade a lot of beta names today because everything was just kind of stuck in a resting position. But this thing did exactly the same thing it did it yesterday. It got rejected off the top of supply and then basically faded the rest of the day. Here is kind of where you start putting on your thinking cap and maybe maybe start putting on your speculation cap again. If you guys remember yesterday, we talked about there wasn't a lot of enthusiasm for the Netflix quarter. I have to say there's no enthusiasm whatsoever on the Tesla quarter going into tomorrow, right? You have absolutely naysayers thinking the stock will be at 190, 180, 175, 150, and maybe it will, right? We don't know. Okay, speculation into earnings is your guess is as good as mine. Again, this that's the exclusive uh, social media answer you guys are going to get. You don't get this type of information from anywhere. But all jokes aside, nobody knows what's going to happen on earnings, right? Um, if you look at the bare bones of what's going on, and this is what we talk about data, 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 
again, we've not seen any put buying or any significant pump buying. We saw some a little bit of 200 puts come in towards the afternoon when the stock was about to go red and actually did go red. Uh, it was a seven point, you know, uh, also, excuse me, almost a, a nine point reversal off the highs. Uh, but we, we, we haven't really seen a, a, an abundance of institutional money flow coming in on the put side. Does that mean anything? It means absolutely nothing. Um, the price cuts, right? The price cuts in different models, that's going to play a part of it. The out-of-the-money call buying that we saw a couple of weeks ago, that's going to play a lot of buying uh, coming to come into play. But the key is for Tesla, and, I, and, I, and not to compare it to Netflix, but the key going into Tesla, in my opinion, for tomorrow is just don't do anything or say anything stupid, right? Everybody knows there's price cuts. Everybody knows you have a little bit of inventory. Everybody knows that Elon Musk needs to acquire 25% or else he's going to you know, go play in the AI uh, space full time, according to him. Okay. The key with Tesla in this rabid bull market is don't say or do anything stupid. Matter of fact, Elon, don't say a word on the conference call. Whatever the headline is, whatever the earnings are, that's it. Ride or die with it, right? Fall on the sword, zip it, shut it, zip it and see what happens. Because if you do zip it and shut it, well, eventually the people who have no more ammunition to sell, again, because we keep this in mind, the stock has sold from 265 all the way down to 207 in the last month. It's a pretty heavy decline. You're talking about a 14% uh, 14 plus or 14% minus um, performance for 2024. The key is the bulls want to see if the bad news is baked in, right? That's kind of like the low hanging fruit right now, because if they don't say anything stupid, yeah, they might rally the stock. The flip side is if they do say something stupid and they give a really bad forecast, then we have room all the way down to here, which is 194, uh, which is the October 30 lows. Again, I am no handicapper. I'm not smart enough to predict what happens. I think anybody who's trying to predict what's going to happen, you might as well tell me the score of the Super Bowl before even tell me who's even going to be in the Super Bowl, right? Just tell me the score. That's what trading into earnings is. It's a guess. So you, I know you want to start sound smart on social media and don't, God forbid anybody thinks uh, you don't know what you're talking about, but earnings, just like ben, betting uh, a sporting event, is it's either going to happen or it's not. So before you start this uh, incredible battle with some um, strangers on social media, what happens with Tesla's going to be, what happens with Tesla's going to meet, and, 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 and all that good stuff. Just remember, nobody knows anything. Nobody has a clue. You could have the earnings report right in your hands and you could still mess up the trade because the price action might not agree uh, with the earnings call. And this is why earnings are a complete crapshoot. So going into tomorrow, um, look, I, I really like certain setups. Uh, Amazon, I really like. We talked about uh, Amazon a couple of minutes ago. Uh, Amazon, I'm watching for the top of the range here. Uh, Snow is another name that looks really, really good. Uh, nice looking chart there as well. Let me give you guys a couple of more names uh, to watch for tomorrow. Um, and you know, Microsoft looks decent. I would like to see one sell off. If there's weakness on uh, Nvidia, I'd like to see if we could get a remount, basically a bounce play off the rising support. Because if you notice here, every single time it's hit the, the, the orange line, it bounced, orange line bounced, orange line bounced, orange line bounced, orange line bounced. It didn't quite hit it today. So if there's any weakness tomorrow on um, Texas Instruments earnings, let's see if we could catch a, let, let's see if we could catch a remount buy uh, on NVIDIA. Uh, other than that, that's it. You know, other than that, that's it. I, again, I, I, I think the longer the technology space kind of, just waits it out a little bit, gets a breath, gets its feet set underneath them. The higher probability that we will continue uh, this rally in the next couple of days. But guys, always keep this in mind. Be prepared on both sides because eventually, if the market does get pulled and you have a little bit of a buying strike, those five-day plays that we just talked about that held for the last couple of days, if they lose them, there will be an aggressive engulfing candle. Like again, you could go through your history books, go through your charts. You'll see no matter how aggressive a bull market is. It never, it's going to go straight up. And those days when they lose the five minute, uh, the five day, that's when you could get an aggressive pull uh, on a backside play. So uh, tomorrow, again, pretty much is what it is. Uh, again, not a lot today, really not a lot today. Uh, as you can see, there was not a lot of beta names today. 
SRPT didn't confirm, EYPT didn't confirm, Disney gapped into the area and went straight down, CVNA didn't confirm, uh, Micron didn't confirm, AMD, I was watching for the five-day break, it didn't confirm, so you're like, what the hell happened today? Well, that's the whole point. The beta wasn't doing anything. We caught a great uh, a great uh, um, uh, rejection play on Tesla. Uh, this little sucker went nuts. Remember we were talking about DWAC yesterday? Uh, this, the Trump stock, 50-20 needs to build? That's the one went nuts. Again, it's not really my thing. I only traded today. Um, I traded some Tesla today, which, which was really good, and I traded, had a little scalp on NVIDIA to the downside. But uh, DWAC, right? We talked about this yesterday. 50-20 uh, needs to build. The damn thing nearly went to 60. Congratulations if you did play this thing. And snow today broke out as well. 203 uh, needs to build. Snow went from 203 to 206. I, I like snow if it could confirm uh, today's channels going into tomorrow. So that's it. The, the stage is set. Uh, the outfits have been picked out. Uh, the star has, has been identified in Elon Musk. Tomorrow's a big day for Tesla, for the rest of the speculation market. And as we continue into earnings season, we'll see how well the bulls can continue to brush off e e any type of bad news to continue this magnificent rally from 2003, uh, 2023. Guys, God bless. Have a great night, everybody. And I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.